In the previous two sections, we have applied physics concepts of kinematics as well as dynamics. For this section, we are going to apply the physics concept of energy to understand more about simple harmonic motion. For this section, we assume that the simple harmonic motion is free oscillation. In other words, there are no dissipative forces. And if for such a case, in a closed system like this, the motion is just a case where kinetic and potential energy interchange. Potential energy can be in the form of uh, elastic potential energy, such as the mass spring system, or gravitational potential energy, like in the case that you see here, a simple pendulum. Let's go to the next slide for further details. At this position, the kinetic energy is zero and the potential energy is maximum. As the pendulum swings down towards the equilibrium position, potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. As it, swing, as it swings further past this equilibrium position, kinetic energy now is converted back to potential energy. So at the other end, kinetic energy is back to zero and potential energy is back to maximum. So as you can see, throughout the whole motion, kinetic energy is converted to potential energy and vice versa, such that the total energy is constant. The total energy is given by the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy. Next, we are going to derive the various expressions for energy, kinetic energy, total energy and potential energy in terms of both displacement and time. We will start off with displacement. This is on page 11 of your lecture notes. We will start off with equations as a function of displacement. So for velocity, this is the expression for velocity in terms of displacement, which you can recall from section 2. We will start off with kinetic energy because kinetic energy is half mv square. So by substituting the expression for v, we obtain this expression. The graph the graphical equivalent of this expression looks like this. Note that at the two extreme point, when the displacement is x0, this expression gives us the, the value of 0. So kinetic energy is 0 at the two extreme points. Kinetic energy is maximum at the equilibrium position when the displacement is zero and this value is given by this expression here when you put zero into x so this expression gives you the maximum value of the kinetic energy you will need to write down this expression into your lecture notes. Next, we will look at the total energy. For total energy, if you recall, the maximum value, the maximum kinetic energy occurs when x is 0 and this value is given by half m omega square x naught square. Since maximum kinetic energy occurs when the potential energy is zero this expression is also the total energy and this total energy and this this value is a constant so the total energy of a shm is constant with displacement at, at any point of the displacement the total energy is a constant Please write down this expression into your lecture notes. 
How about potential energy? For potential energy, we derive it by using total energy and kinetic energy. Because the potential energy is given by the total energy minus the kinetic energy. So if you put the two expressions that you have obtained earlier, you will get this expression. Please copy this into your lecture notes. The corresponding graph for this expression is given by an x squared graph. And take note that the maximum value is when you substitute x0 into x, then you will get the same expression for total energy, which is, of course, also the expression for maximum potential energy. So on page 12, you have a summary of all the three graphs of how total energy, kinetic energy, as well as potential energy varies with displacement. Now that you have seen how the energy changes with displacement, let's look at how energy changes with time. Again, we start off with kinetic energy. And if we are using sine graph to represent displacement, then the corresponding graph for velocity after differentiating will be this. Kinetic energy is half mv squared. So by substituting v squared into this expression, then we'll have the expression for kinetic energy as a function of time. You can see that it is a cosine square graph. So the dotted line represents a typical cosine graph. Kinetic energy will be represented by a cosine graph, cosine square graph, which is the one that you see in red. Note that the maximum value is given by the amplitude of this, this uh, expression, and it is half m omega square x naught square, which agrees with what you have earlier. How about total energy? Again, this is consistent with what we have previously. The total energy does not change at all. So of course, it's constant with time. So graph-wise, it will be a horizontal straight line with this, with this magnitude. Again, for potential energy, we simply derive the expression using total energy and kinetic energy. We simplify this expression by taking out half m omega square x naught square, leaving us with 1 minus cosine square in the bracket. 1 minus cosine square is simply sine square, using the ident identity sine square plus cosine square equal to 1. So the corresponding graph will be a sine square graph for potential energy. Again, the magnitude, the maximum value is half m omega square. This will be the maximum value for the potential energy. Putting them all together, this, this graph you can see on page 12, you have kinetic energy, which is a cosine square graph, and potential energy, which is a sine square graph. Total energy is constant with time. Note that the period, this period T here represents the period of the oscillation. And note that there are the kinetic energy as well as the potential energy. Within one period, there are two cycles. So 
you take note of this in your notes that there are two cycles of kinetic energy in one period for the oscillation To end off, let's look at example 4.1. You are given a graph. And this graph is a potential energy graph. And you are told that this object is doing simple harmonic motion. So A, what will be the total energy of system? Here you can straight away read from the graph the total energy of the total energy of system must be the maximum value of this graph so it will be 1 joule using this total en energy we can calculate the period of oscillation because we know that the total energy is given by this expression from this expression we can count substituting the values of uh, mass 4 kg as well as the amplitude of 0 0.2 we can obtain omega which will help us to, to get the period because omega is 2 pi over t so the t period is 1.8 seconds to summarize for section 4 energy in simple harmonic motion the total energy, which is the summation of kinetic and potential energy, is constant. We, are also, we have also learned the corresponding equations and graph for kinetic and potential energy as a function of displacement. We have also derived equation and the corresponding graph for kinetic and potential energy as a function of time. For the next video, for the next section, we will look at dam and force oscillation. See you.